Good morning everybody, or good afternoon, good evening, depends when you're watching it, but it's nice and early in the morning here at the workshop. Right, we've got a very special day today, and when I say special, I mean a very, very special day. We have got a camper conversion coming to the workshop to, funny enough, have one of my famous Unistrut roof racks fitted to it. Now, the reason this conversion is so special, from a few reasons, first one is, it's probably one of the smallest camper vans or camper conversions that I've ever seen. Now, if you know what a Vauxhall Agila is, and I'll leave a picture of one of these Vauxhall Agilas in the corner just there, that is a Vauxhall Agila. That has been converted into a camper, uh, but it's been converted for a very, very, very special reason. Uh, the couple, um, Doug and Alex, <clears throat> that own this vehicle, have entered it into the Mongol Rally in 2022. Um, so it's one of those vehicles they paid less than £500 for. Um, it's got to be less than one litre and it's, you know, it's one of those rallies. Check out the Mongol Rally. I'll leave a link in the description below about the Mongol Rally. But believe me, it is fierce. I've watched some videos on it. I plan to do it in 2023. Unfortunately, other commitments is going to stop me doing that because it will take me away from what I need, where I need to be here for quite a few months. This couple, Doug and Alex, are amazing. They're the loveliest, loveliest couple that I've ever met. So they're raising money um, for our veterans. That's what it's all about. Um, I'll give a much more detailed explanation a bit later, but I'm going to try and get Doug to tell me himself when he arrives with the car about this, about the charity and their whole reasoning behind doing this rally. They, I say, they're an amazing couple. Um, hello. Hello, Doug, you're all right, are you here? And it's just literally to the left. You'll see my black truck and my camper van and I'll see you there. All right, see you bye. Funny enough, that was him on the phone. He's arrived. So, we'll scrap this here for now. I need to go, go and meet him, and then hopefully I'll come back to you on camera, get him on camera, and we'll get him talking about the charity, the rally, everything, and what's going on. I'll see you shortly. Right, okay, we're here today, as I just explained on the camera already, with Alex and Doug. Now, I waffled on a bit about the charity and that. To be honest with you, I might even edit that bit out and just let them tell you all about the car, all about the Mongol Rally, and all about the charity they're doing it for, why's, where's, what for's. We are gonna sponsor them with our famous Unistrut roof racks, and um, we've got a lot of stuff going on it. I am gonna video the whole process of this build. Um, we put it out on YouTube, on YouTube. All I say is we're looking for sponsors for these two to do this rally and the actual charity, bless them up, it is amazing. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So please, please, please sponsor them. If you wanna know how to find them, where to sponsor them, all the details will be in the description below. If you can't get it or can't get to them, let me know and I will forward your details on. Anyway, so how did you come about to even wanna to start to do the, the Mongol Rally? Where did this come from? <laughs> Oof. So, uh, well, I suppose it, it, for our first actual, our actual first date, we went on our first date, we were both talking, and uh, we were both going, have you heard of the Mongol Rally? Because we both heard about it, it's, a, it's an event, but we were like, oh. So yeah, we both heard about it, and we thought... Both want to do more travel and, and get across the world, but in a kind of more eco-friendly way, if we can, less flying and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so... It kind of just grew from that first date, really. <laughs> and, uh, so your first date started off talking about the Mongol Rally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a first date. <laughs> so from your first ever date together, you've actually gone from just talking about it to actually doing it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That is amazing. I mean, that is amazing. What a story. That is, <laughs> that's unbelievable. So it's sort of, because um, of that, it led us, we wanted to do the Mongol Rally. Um, the Mongol Rally is an official rally. Basically, you start in the UK, you drive to Mongolia, and they just leave you to your own, your own devices in between. So you just, there's no, no support, you nothing, gotta, you're on your own. You gotta so, be at the start line on a date and at the finish line by a certain date and that's it. You're unsupported for the rest of the journey. Um, pretty so, much you and you alone. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So there's, there's lots of other cars that do it, so sometimes people will meet, meet up along the way and things like that, so you get a little bit of company. Um, but yeah, predominantly you're on your own, got to got to hack it and, and work it out when things go wrong. <laughs> so there's, there's specific rules for the rally. One of them is the car has to be less than £500 and has to be 1.2 litres if you're a bit of a chicken or less, you know, you, the highest is 1.2 litres. Yeah. So uh, hence why we ended up buying ourselves a 1.2 uh, 2003 Vauxhall Aguila uh, for <laughs> £450. <laughs> this, as I said, smallest camera ver conversion I've ever seen. <laughs> smallest. Yeah, um, so then we... Oh, this, and one key, sorry, sorry about no, 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 Absolutely. So a Vauxhall Aguila, small. How tall are you, Alex? Uh, Doug, sorry, I'm how six, tall are you? I'm 6'2". <laughs> Doug is six foot two. Oh my god! <laughs> so we we, uh, we decided we wanted to save money on um, on like hostels and stuff like that on the journey, and we'd seen videos where people were camping and getting flooded and just yeah. looked a bit miserable. So we wanted to do it in a little bit more comfort. We thought we wanted to have a little camper here anyway in the UK, and we just thought, well, we'll we'll kit it out as a, a mini camper. So we just stripped it back and, and built a bed in it, and mm. uh, stripped yeah. it back, and from there sort of went. How Ooh, do we do whoops. this? <laughs> yeah, and believe me, at six foot two, he does sleep in this. Yeah. Um, With the boot closed. <laughs> once we finish the roof rack, when they come back to pick the car up, we do some more video and we go through the whole camper conversion with them. And I was really surprised. When I first saw this and I knew how tall Doug was, it was like, I, and I still can't believe to this day that he does fit from head head to foot in the, in the car with the door shut and everything. Space with a little spare. bit of space, yeah. yeah. And Room space to spare. To spare. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was one of the things that it still sticks up there. And, <laughs> but yeah, so and the conversion, the conversion on this, absolutely amazing. And you've done that all yourself, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, did that. Yeah, and believe yeah. me, he, it is amazing. But I say, I'll save that for the end of the video <laughs> after we've done the roof rack. <laughs> so obviously this is in, what, is July 2022? Uh, yes, yes. Right, so yeah, they're going away in July 2022. How long are you away for? Uh, we're away for four months. The rally itself is two months, but we're taking two months more so we can raise more money for the charities that we're um, sponsoring basically yeah and we're trying to we're Can trying I to fundraise know. for so um so the outbound yeah. journey is the initial two months which is the official rally yeah. and then we don't want to fly back because obviously that kind of defeats the purpose of, of why we're doing it um one of our charities uh, being cool earth so we want to drive the car back as well so that's why so we're sheila's coming it. back with you yeah yes, absolutely, absolutely. She's more adventures adventure still left in her yeah, reckon. hopefully i was going to say so after the rally <laughs> Touch wood, there's wood in here. Touch wood. <laughs> the car's fine, everything's fine with the car coming back. What are you going to do with the car then? Hopefully, we'll have some more adventures in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, what I like to hear. North keep Africa sounds quite, quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we want to keep her as our little adventure mobile. She's, she's far too good to, to get rid of, and mm. so much work's gone into She'll be able to tell some stories. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. You, know, you two are amazing. I said this in, when I was doing the intro before you arrived. This whole thing they're doing, to me, I say, is absolutely amazing. So please, please stick your hand in your pocket. I don't normally ask people to do that. Please sponsor them because I'm trying to convince them to do their YouTube channel <laughs> of the whole journey. And they want to do it. They are going to do it. And believe me, by the time we finish, if we have to help them, we're going to do it with them. <laughs> so, but yeah, so anyway, that's it for now. Thank you. And at the end of the video, you will be talking to them again and meet again after the roof rack build's done. So this might end up being quite a long video because we're going to do a tour of the actual vehicle when it's finished. And I want to know what everybody thinks in the comments below. Like I always say, be nice. Constructive <laughs> criticism is fine, but be nice. And I'll see you shortly. Right, so that was Alex and Doug. And... This is their little baby, Sheila the Ajila. So with all their sponsorships on. And what we've got to do is we have got to fit this, those, and everything else up on the roof of this vehicle. The plan is to remove this and replace it with a Unistrup roof rack, which is gonna be similar to this. It's gonna be a cage, and it's gonna be extended probably out to about here somewhere. So we can fit everything on the roof, and we can also fit 
two spare wheels, the box, the jerry cans, and a light bar on the front of the roof rack. And that little beast then will be heading to Mongolia and a nice four month journey on treacherous and all sorts of terrain. It's gonna be very exciting. We will get them doing a YouTube channel. We will get them to do it. <laughs> so then you lot can watch it along with us. Right, so that's me done. The next bit is to build the roof rack, design it before I build it. The box that's gonna go on the roof is gonna get refurbished as well. We're gonna put new hasps on it. We're gonna paint it. And then we need to work out a cradling system for everything. So what I've decided to do with the roof rack first is remove the whole roof rack in one piece. Now it's attached to here. If you have a look at this closely, there's a nut there with a threaded bar that goes well through here, underneath here. So we're gonna take, there's four of them, one this side, one the other side, one at the front and then one on the other side at the front. We're gonna remove those and then just lift the whole roof rack with the wheel, the awning and the shower frame off in one piece. We'll put on a couple of trestles, we'll assess it from there, and then we'll work out the size of the new roof rack. Roof rack is off. Should we take it and show you where it is? Right, so there you go. That is the cradle that's come off the roof. All we gotta do now is strip this off. We need to take off the spare wheel. We need to take off the shower frame that they built for their shower curtain. Take off the gas bottle mounting um, cradle and take off the awning. Then this one would probably get cannibalized and used for parts for the new one going on there. Um, especially the grill under here because that is gonna be a useful part. We can cut that off of here and use that as part of the base for the new rack. off there now that needs to be off that frame so we can make the new frame and mount everything back on there anyway on to the next part of the build you've seen me cut some of the unistrut for the uh, roof rails and so the cross braces I need to cut one more cross brace so we've got three
So I'm a little bit brainless. I've just realized I've made a big, big boo-boo, as we all do, but I think it's because it's the end of the day, getting tired. These bars are gonna be directly mounted to the roof rack that's already on Sheila. The bit that goes from front to back there. Problem is, I put these on top. They need to be mounted underneath. So, doll, never mind. Tomorrow's job, I'll be coming back, unbolting them, putting them underneath. It's not a huge thing, not a massive problem, but it was just uh, getting too excited about the project, getting too excited about building things. We all make mistakes, we all do it. Like I say, very tiring today, very tired and long day, end of day. Never mind, I'll get them removed and when we come back tomorrow, I'll get them put back on but underneath instead of on top. I know I said I was actually gonna fix that problem tomorrow, but uh, I'm impatient, I couldn't wait. We have done it. I've moved the bars that are on top underneath. So you can get a good idea of how long this roof rack's gonna be. With the plastic ends on those standard roof rails, it's a little bit worrying for me because some of these roads they're gonna be going over are not very sort of car friendly. Um, judging by what I've seen on a lot of the videos online, there's some rough terrain they're gonna hit. And <clears throat> with the weight of the roof rack on it, I'm worried about they're gonna fracture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those plastic rails off and I'm gonna replace it with some more unistrut so i'm going to make that as the main roof rails for the roof rack um, and attach that roof rack direct onto them ones it's going to be a lot sturdier um, the last thing i want to do get them to go out there and somewhere with the weight of the roof box um, the military box two wheels four jerry cans full of fuel and water for them two plastic on each side, one of them to fracture or rupture. Um, <clears throat> again, this roof rack is not going to look pretty, but it's not there to look pretty, it's there to serve a real purpose. And they're going to be travelling thousands of miles, four months on the road. This has got to be safe, got to be secure, and it's got to be fit for purpose. So I'm going to take them off, you can watch me take them off, and then we'll crack on with the rest of the build. Right, so there you go, two studs. Right, so though when it's actually attached, it's gonna be slightly at an angle, this is gonna be more solid to attach our roof rack to. This channel is definitely gonna be flexible enough to be, bent, be able to sort of follow the curve of the roof and bolt onto both ends. The only thing is, I've got it in both bolts that end, but if you notice this end, we may have to sort of drill a couple more holes or grind that side out. So what I've done is, so all the holes line up on where the studs poke out of the roof of the car. I've drilled two holes on one end. As you can see, there's quite a difference in the spacing. And know which way I slid it on the other bolts, it wouldn't fit, so we've had to drill holes. So first of all, I'm literally, let's say I'm going to dry fit this. I'll dry fit on the roof and then we'll put the roof rack that we've got so far up there and see what it looks like.
show you what I've done. So I've only just put the nuts on there for now. I am going to be putting washers under those nuts when it's finally fixed. This is just a dry fit. I'm going to put the other side on. Then we're going to put the little piece of the roof rack that I've already made on there um, to find out where I need to go with it next. Right, to give you an idea of what we've done, um, these crossbars aren't fixed. <clears throat> but we've now mounted another piece of this channel on top like this. So we've got one there. One there. And one at the front. And that is to mount these three crossbars on. And once the three crossbars are mounted, from front to back, you're gonna have another roof rail which will sit on the edge of these. And then we build up the cage on top of that. It's a lot of metal. It's going to be very strong um, and it'll be able to take the weight of literally of anything they want to put on there. So hopefully, if you can see from this side, you can see just how much the curve the roof is. Since we're using a lot of Unistrut on this vehicle, I'm going to have a quick chat to you about Unistrut. Now, as a kid, we used to have Meccano. Now, the best way to describe Unistrut, especially under these conditions and these circumstances, is it's just big boys Meccano. So, you get your L brackets, you get all sorts of shaped brackets. There's the acute and obtuse angles, like this. And this, you get corner plates. There's so much stuff you can get for Unistra, it is unbelievable how much stuff you can actually buy for it. At the front here, we're going to give it a little bit of a sort of aerodynamic slant, which is going to be pointless really because there's going to be a massive go big metal box on the roof. So, we're going to use these brackets. So, we're going to get a piece of Unistra coming up like this, sort of at an angle, and we're going to attach it to these brackets. So, the first one will sit here. So that will bolt onto there, and that gives you the angle that we need. And then this one will bolt to the other piece of Unistrut up here, bring it back so we can go straight along. And then we put a metal sheet across the front. So at the back of the Unistrut here, we'll have one piece, that one there, like so, and the cut one will go on top above it, and that will give us our side profile. It's just big boys Meccano. Nuts, bolts, brackets. And it's that's the best way to describe Unistrut. And as the new bus of mine, uh, the build goes on along with that one, you'll see Unistrut is gonna play a big part of that bus. And when it comes to the tanks, the bed frame, the bed lift, um, all sorts. So, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. It means the world to me. Um, I'm now on just over 3,000 subscribers and I'm absolutely blown away by the amount of people viewing my channel and the amount of people and the amount of messages and emails that I'm getting from people asking for different things. And um, I do get a lot of people asking me what camera equipment I use and things like that. I will go down that route and explain the um, gadgets and everything that I use one day. Um, the only reason because is I've actually got a company that's sending me a camera, or should be sending me a camera, should I say, um, and I'm going to review it because it's quite similar to the one I already use. I'll go through the camera equipment one day with you in one of my separate vlogs that I do, but yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and um, please hit the like button, give, you know, hit the notification bell so you, as the videos come out, you'll get to see them straight away and get notified when they're coming out. As I say, I do videos every Thursday and I am trying to get two out a week again. Um, had a bit of an IT issue, so that's now been resolved. So hopefully soon we'll be going back to maybe two a week or not, maybe not every week, but I'm going to try and put out some sort of what I would call 
sort of a day in the life of me type thing um, once a week and um, I'll do my quick tips again things about quick tips about stuff that we use and um, I might even do a quick tip actually on Unistrut because I've had a lot a lot of questions about Unistrut anyway I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea I'll be back to you shortly we'll crack on with the roof rack I've been wearing gloves. The only time I don't wear gloves. <laughs> Captive nuts, they're called zebs. If you can see, just across the top there, there's little ridges. Now those ridges sit under here because it's like serrated under there. So once it's locked in place, they won't move backwards and forwards. Good stuff this is. Best way to get these in here, push them down and turn them clockwise. And the reason being is they're curved on one edge, which is that edge, and square on that edge. So when you turn it, it will only turn so far. Big boys come on. Big boys come up. Oh my god, I said that twice. Big boys Meccano. Great stuff. Make a crane next. A jeep. I am only joking. Although I still am a child at heart. Do you know they say as you get older you grow up? Yeah, I'm sure the brain got younger for me. I've become more childish. I mean, come on, I'm still playing with my car, no. <laughs> right, so come on, I want to know in the comments. How many men out there have actually grown up? Or are you still big kids? Just like me. Another piece, another two pieces, 120 millimeters long for the back. So that's the upright at the back. There's the brackets, nice and strong. So now what I've got to do is cut the piece that goes from here to meet the front here. I've taken this top bar off, it goes along. The reason being is because I need to affix the bar going across to stabilize this. Like nothing can attach this to the back here or the front anywhere, only on the bottom. I'm cutting a bar to go across the top here, which I need to drill. As you can see over there, we had one here, going along here. But I need a bar that goes from here to here. Because we've got one, these are stabilising the bottom, and there's going to be a small bar here as well. So I need one at the top. And then at the front, we're going to be doing the same, have a bar from here going across to that side. And that will give the rigidity between side to side.
So these two bars here, one's for the back. So you can see where we put this one on. We're gonna have one across the top here as well. So that's one of the bars. The next one will be bolted to the inside of here and go across to the other side there. So it'll come across under here. The reason being is, this is pretty much a waste of space. It's more like of an aerodynamic foil um, because there will be a sheet of metal across there. But also, set on top of here will be a light bar. So the piece of material going across here will have a cutout in it and it um, will show the light bar at the front. So there you go. That's where we're at so far. It's very, very, very cold out there. I've literally come to a halt on that now. And until I get the rest of the materials, the Zebs and the grill, I'm literally stuck. Um, one thing I did forget to say, in the original plans for this, there was a bar attached to this for the center. But because of the height difference, it, it, there's, there's it's too much of a gap here to put a bar there. So I'm going to use one of the narrow ones that's going to be attached to the actual, these rails here, not this one, and go right across the centre. I'm looking forward to seeing this when it's finished. I'm quite excited of how it's turned out so far. Unistrut is probably the best solution for his roof rack for this rally. And the main reason why is, um, if you've got a welded roof rack up there, something breaks, something snaps, you've got to go to a garage, get it welded up, get it fixed. If something goes wrong with this, a few spanners, we're going to get some spares, some zebs, some bolts, some washers. So it can repair it or fix it on the roadside. And if he needs to add stuff to it, he's got them, he can use his nuts bolts. That's why we've chosen to go with the Unistrut method. Although I love my Unistrut, as everybody knows, I've chosen to use this method because it's suitable for the rally and the treacherous, some of the treacherous terrain they're going to be going along. It will hold everything they need for that journey. I mean, it's four months traveling from the UK to Mongolia and back again, go through untold other countries, untold other terrains. I'm stuck here now because I say I'm missing some zebs and I need the steel mesh to put in the bottom. So me being me, I've just realized I don't need zebs to put these bars on. As you can see, it's up there, but I haven't bolted it in yet. I'm just about to do that. There you go, there's those front and rear bar on. Let's give you a closer look. It's the rear bar. And the front bar. I'm actually considering putting the front bar on the top here as yet. But I've not made that final decision on that one. Now, that's as far as I can go. Until the grill arrives. Hi everybody, so you've probably just watched my video on Sheila the Agila. The first part in two installments of their roof rack. Right, so the reason I've separated into two parts because it would have made one hell of a long video. I hope you're enjoying it, I hope you're enjoying the build and as, as I love my Unistrut, it's one of my favorite things. If there's anything you want to see in particular regarding Unistrut or anything, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this build so far and let me know your com comments on it. Anyway, it might sound a little bit echoing I'm sorry at the moment because I'm in the studio or we're setting up a little studio. Let me give you a little a look around. It is a bit of a mess, but we're getting all the lights up, the microphones, the sound deadening. and So yeah, it, it's work in progress. And that's so we can do a few product reviews, on, especially on the stuff that we're using on the vans. Um, trying to give an in-depth sort of review of everything. And this has nothing to do with being paid reviews. We buy everything at the moment. We buy everything ourselves. We've got no one sponsoring us. 
Um, no one's offered to sponsor us, so, you know, everything we get, we buy. And then we give honest reviews on everything. Even if people want to pay us to do things, we're going to give honest reviews, and that's the people we are. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It helps the channel massively. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If it's a thumbs down, let me know why you give me a thumbs down so I can try and improve uh, the videos, the channel, and everything for you. Anyway, that's all I've got time for now. And I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying well. And most of all, staying very, very happy. Bye for now.